George, in wanting to understand what the universe is all about, we start with physical laws. And these are generally considered constant. They're, they're, uh, it, where they are here, are the same throughout the universe, billions of light years away, or early in time or later in time. That's generally been a, a foundation of science. Yet some would begin to question that. Some of the foundational laws, they say that maybe there's some evidence that they can change over long periods of time. Uh, in your work studying the early universe, do you have any sense of, of, uh, of any data that can help us to understand the, whether physical laws are really, really constant? Okay, so this is, this is probably one of the most crucial questions of understanding the universe. You know, do the rules change in the game or not, right? Can, is there a way out, right? Or is there a way in? And, but what we have is fairly good evidence that if you look over the sweep of history from fairly early times, from the first few minutes, maybe a few seconds. Of the universe. Uh, of the universe to the present, and over vast distances when you look out and look at the light from distant galaxies and see how it behaves, we have fairly good evidence that the laws of physics are independent of where we are in space and fairly independent of where we are in time to, to, to a very high degree. And as far as we can tell, they could be constant in, in space and time. And that's very important because that's tied to symmetries of the structure of space-time itself. And uh, but then you go back to the very, very beginning of the universe when the structure of space-time is first unfolding, when we get to the moments of inflation and before, you could think that it's possible that the laws of physics are changing. And now, when I say the laws of physics are changing or not changing, the, you know, people have heard about the forces unifying when you get to certain energies, right? I don't think of that as a change in the law of physics. The, 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 the equations you would write down for how it behaves give you different behaviors, just like they give you a different behavior for water frozen, water liquid and water and gas. That's the same law of physics, just in operating a different domain. But you can say, well, do the things that we used to think of as fundamental constants, the, the coefficients and, or the terms in the equation, that they change as you go back earlier. And the place that would happen, in, in my mind, is in the place where space and time has a different structure than it does here. Right? We live in a particularly smooth and simple universe. It's very big, it's very flat, it's, you know, there's three large spatial dimensions and one smoothly flowing time dimension. That's a very, very uniform, very symmetric situation. The laws of physics then show up very smoothly and very symmetrically there, and they allow us to do all this description and understanding very well. But when you go back when the universe, space and time might be all twisted up, and then things could be very different. Mm. And so that's the question. Um, the easiest conceptual thing to do is just extrapolate everything we do right back to the beginning and then use some logic about how things must behave when you start twisting things up. And just guess and choose Occam's razor, just the simplest possible version, and see what you come up with. And you come back to the system like string theory where you have you know, a free parameter and it wiggles around and it ends up producing, you know, it, it, there's a little motion at the beginning when space time is wrinkling around until it gets flat and inflation takes over. And, and uh, then you get the rules we have now. And that's the sort of picture that I think is a good paradigm to start with to, to pursue it. But it doesn't mean that other people won't come with other ideas and we can test them because we, we have observations, right? It's much harder to change the laws of physics you know, over space and time in the more recent universe that is after a few minutes to the present than it is in the very beginning. What kind of observations do you make that gives you this level of confidence right. in terms of uh, uh, the laws of physics being constant over distance and times? Right. So the, the most common set of observations that people or astronomers go out and look at distant galaxies and just like looking at the sun, you see the, the thermal radiation from the sun, plus you see the lines from the various elements, you can look for the thermal radiation from the stars and those distant galaxies and the lines from it. Or you can look particularly at the supernova, which are extremely bright, and you see the shape of the curve from the supernova plus the lines in it. And you see how those lines look, and you see the same elements, and you see the lines appearing with the same ratios. And then you can do more detailed studies where 
there are sometimes the, there's there's multiple ways the electrons could line up in an atom to give you the same line, but if there's a magnetic field or some other effect, it can slightly differentiate them, and then you can do ratios and 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 compare different things. So you can actually look and separate out the, some of the various constants, and people are trying to do that, and you know every now and then they say, well maybe it's stink, but the the kind of variation that people are talking about over billions of years is less than a part in a hundred thousand, right? And so. It's that's that's even in, in the possibility of a change. That's right. not certain in recent times. Whereas in the very beginning of the universe, it could be changing by big factors, right? And so that's the you know. So from my viewpoint of view, the the description, the simple description says it's pretty much been fixed since the beginning, right? And now uh, you can do. But it doesn't mean that people don't have other ideas, and and we test them by making these kinds of observations. Well, some of the theories that uh, would generate multiple universes, for example, would have each universe having a whole different set of of uh, of, of laws and, and constants of uh, of physics. But those are more theoretical. We don't have evidence because in our universe, it's it seems to be set. Right. And the and so when we say our universe, we generally mean the part of the universe we, we can, can see. see. Right. And we may take a little bit broader view and say there is a bubble produced by inflation or whatever made the accelerating expansion of the universe that produced all the things. Thing. That may be very huge. It might be that we're seeing a tiny, tiny fraction of that, and that could be very huge, but it doesn't mean there couldn't be other bubbles. But And then the question is, could those have different parameters? And that then depends on how you think the very you know, essence of structure of space and time and the strings or the brains or whatever it is that the membranes that make up the fabric of space and time and the particles, how they actually interact and behave. And, and uh, for a while we had a view there was only one possibility. Now we have the, the view there could be multiple possibilities, but we don't know whether they're stable or not, whether they collapse into one thing or not. Looking at our universe, the universe that we do see, what are the implications that the laws of physics are apparently constant, at least up until the very beginning? Well, it makes it easier for students <laughs> right away because you have to learn, only learn one set of laws. But it also makes it easier to calculate. But it also tells you how quickly the universe became stable and like it is, you know, in some sense, like it is today. You had to have a big, wide, flat space to start constructing the universe. Right? You needed a place to stand. It's like, you know, Archimedes says, give me a place to stand, I can move the earth, when he invented the lever, right? Yeah. Somehow you have to have a place to stand yeah. to make the universe, right? Yeah. Once you have that place, that's kind of, you know, you just, you erect a set out the whole universe, and it comes out just like it is, right? So it makes the universe comprehensible to human beings, uh, the c constancy of, of physical law, and it enables you and your colleagues within a, this incredibly short span of human history, a couple of hundred years of, a few hundred years of science and a hundred years or so of, of, of astronomy and cosmological observation to really have such a profound picture of the history of the universe because of the constancy of those laws. Yeah, and the constancy of those laws and the simplicity of the laws, they they have implicit in them a symmetry mm. that is that is linked to the symmetry of the space and time we live in. And and it's not like you could just change the law of physics and not change the structure of space time too, although I'm sure people will try. But if you just look at how things go, just you know, the fact that when you rotate around, you look the same, right? If you take an object and rotate it around, sure. it looks the same. That's a symmetry of space, but it also is a symmetry, it's conservation of momentum, just like being able to translate in space is conservation of momentum, right? When you drive your car, it keeps going along the same way, right? Except for air resistance. And likewise, there's, there's all the symmetries that we have in space, they end up manifesting themselves as a law of physics, right? And so if you try changing the law of physics, you may have to change the symmetry of space and time. And because we don't change the law of, of physics, as far as we know, then the symmetries are maintained and the universe has this beautiful story that we see. Right. The universe is this beautiful symmetric place with all these, it's like snowdrops forming, you know, <laughs> snowflakes forming everywhere. They, they all, each are a little different, but they all have the same symmetry pattern to them. And that's how the universe kind of unfolds. It doesn't mean at the very beginning that things weren't in flux, but it settled down very quickly and went on from there.